Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Pastors of Pain. I said it's still Merry Christmas because it's still the Christmas season. Woo! Uh, so many people, I said it last time, so many people think Christmas is just one day. Those people are wrong mm-hmm. because Christmas is a season. season. Now, we also have other exciting and interesting like events that happen, like the new year. So here we are. We made it to 2021. I think most people thought the world would end in 2020. <laughs> and here we are, uh, still going. COVID's mm-hmm. still uh, in our lives, still part of things, and that's just the way it goes. And mm-hmm. we're just going to keep dealing with it until, you know, until that comes along. But anyway, we have For a sure. very special guest. You heard him on the last episode, and we got him again! Woohoo! Seminarian for the Diocese of Tulsa, Mr. Kyle Dowd. Kyle, how was your Christmas? It was very good. It was very long. Yeah, there were uh, a it was lot long. Of it was a big day, big day, yeah. long day. Really but we didn't good. have a choice. Usually, we yeah. have usually in Stillwater we have five Christmas masses. So mm-hmm. most weekends we have four masses. Christmas we do five. Right. And this year we did seven, seven. to Ooh. try to get. Yeah, just so everybody would have yeah have a place feel to go welcome and because yeah. we you know our church seats six hundred, but COVID we sort of max out at about two hundred. Mm-hmm. Uh, want to make sure everyone can get in there with social distancing. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And it and it went you know mm-hmm, it went yeah it went well pretty, pretty smooth yeah. So that's uh, what Kyle is preparing for in his life as a as a uh, p- possible future priest mm-hmm. to uh, celebrate seven masses in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we had a little. We had some help. Had some help. We had some help. Uh, what it is? A, it is actually a great blessing. I was telling some people the other day. You know, a lot of parishes are having to. It depends on where you are in the country. Mm-hmm. You know, like either either not have mass at all, have mass outside, which it's December, so it's cold, mm-hmm. or it's you know snowing and raining somewhere, and then. A lot of places they have to do some kind of, or they've chosen to do some kind of like reservation system, mm-hmm. and I don't, and I don't. There's no, I don't judge. Yeah, I'm just glad that we're not doing that, for sure. Because I think especially Christmas, you know, we saw at Christmas masses, you know, a lot of kind of the, our usual faces, you know, our our sort of rank and file, super faithful parishioners mm-hmm. there at at everything, and they are a blessing, and they're really, I mean, they're the, you know, in many ways the foundation of the of the parish. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, you know, that group, it's that group's job to now, you know, invite others. We heard on the last episode, like Kyle was saying, you know, how he became a Catholic because people like kind of invited him yeah. in and, 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 you know, we're not afraid to say, Hey, do you want to come to mass with me? Or do you want to come on this retreat? Or, mm-hmm. and so, but to have space, not for just kind of the insiders, but to have space for the random person. Yeah. Off the street. I think especially at midnight mass, you know, we always see people who are, uh, they just, they're not Catholic, but they just like midnight mass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it is, I mean, and it's, it's, a it's different. Thing. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, the it's choir beautiful. did a great job. Um, it's different. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. different. Um, and so, anyway, so it's, it's yeah. Christmas is still going. Mm-hmm. So Merry Christmas. Days, right? Isn't it? I'm going to say, I'm going to say Merry Christmas it? until like June. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I probably won't. I probably won't do that because Lent is coming. Yeah. Dang, Lent is early bum, this year. Bum, bum. So we're actually about six weeks from Lent. Oh wow, man. All right. Well, so we won't. We won't get yeah. into that. that um, future episode. Future episode. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Kyle, I thought uh, we had a. We have a. Uh, sometimes we get requests from uh, our 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 dozens of listeners. Uh, <laughs> we actually usually have a couple hundred listeners. Oh, so anyway, wow. I don't yeah. mean to downplay. Two horn, you know. But, yeah. uh, and somebody asked. They wanted to know about. What is the deal with liturgical colors? Hmm. So when you come, for those of you who are Catholic, or those if you or if you've been to a Catholic church, when you walk in there, the, and and usually you see it most like on the whatever the like the priest and the deacon, mm-hmm. but there's a particular color that they are wearing. Right. When you became Catholic, what what did oh you what, what what the, did you know? I remember the first mass that I went to uh, at St. Francis St. Francis Xavier in Tulsa, um the another church of the largely, same name. Largely now largely Spanish speaking yeah. and um, but it was clo- the closest church to TU. Yeah. And so I remember going there with a friend uh, my freshman year um and s- I was singing in the choir loft and I remember mm-hmm. seeing the priest walk up there, and one of my first impressions of the mass was like, "What is he wearing? Like, what is that weird, like, green snuggie that he's got on?" <laughs> <It's> so <laughs> snuggie. This is so That's... weird. 
You know, because like you know, growing up Protestant, everyone wears suits and ties and stuff. I'm like, what is including this? like the ministers? Yeah, the yes, minister, the yeah. pastor will wear it. Um, most, I mean, you know, grown up Baptist. So dressed I guess. up. I mean, and that's yeah. So I think yeah. it, you could you could tell if you went to like the church where you grew up. Like, yeah, obviously something important and different is happening. Yes, because the pastor, you know, he's not is in dress. He's not in shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah, he's not in a tank top. Mm-hmm. He's wearing a suit. Okay, wow. So yeah. this is something you know, yeah, but dignified. The, yeah, and in the Catholic Church, I guess that's kind of taken to a whole new level because not only is it that um, you, I mean, you're the the priest is wearing clothes and I mean, we call them vestments, but like clothes that um, you would never ever wear at anything else. You know, maybe back in the you know like eight hundred years ago or twelve hundred years ago, whatever, those were kind of in style, but you know now they're like they're special to indicate like there's something very unique going on in this unique building that happens nowhere else. Yeah, you will not no see Father Kerry or I or Father Robert, yeah, out to out to uh, know, at Eskimo out Joe's yeah. wearing a chasuble. Yeah, hopefully not. Uh hopefully yeah. hopefully <laughs> not. Hopefully. And in fact, I mean so we wear, you know, we wear clerical attire. But even that, like the way that the way that the Catholic Church lays it out is even like w- during the mass you you would you don't even see the priest's yeah like, like Roman the collar and the, and the Roman clerical collar. attire even yeah. that is covered by a couple different vestments we have the, mm-hmm. the what we call the alb mm-hmm. which is a uh, that's a, the big white ga- yeah, gown which really thing. actually anyone anyone who's baptized can wear mm-hmm. an alb it's that's, the garment of the baptized yeah. and I think it's important to like state before we yeah like start listing these out that all of these different clothings. They like they symbolize something about the Christian life, or yes. about like what's going on it's not at random. the mass. Yeah, yep. so it's all like they all. It's like you're putting on, like with the album, for example, like you're talking about your baptismal garment. You know, it's like you're putting you're putting on a reminder of the purity of soul that you received at baptism. Yep. Kind of like that single-hearted, single-minded devotion to God that you received at baptism. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So then as a priest, then you put on, uh, we have a, what we call a cincture, which is a um, usually belt. white, but it can be different colors. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's almost like a belt, mm-hmm. you know, and it's kind of a rope that goes around. But it, but again, there's not just for priests. Um, anyone wearing an alb can also wear a cincture. Yeah. And it's a reminder of our call to chastity. Mm-hmm. And so chastity, everyone is called to chastity, Uh but but lived out different. So as a priest, my call to chastity is as a celibate. Mm-hmm. Someone who's married, you know, is called. They can they can uh, you know like have sex within the marital embrace, but right. but not outside of that. Right. Um, and then anyway, that's a whole different that's a whole different show. For right. A whole, a whole different. Um, but then when when we get to then a priest is going to celebrate mass, he puts on a stole, mm-hmm. which is a, like a symbol of. Uh, like authority, yeah, kind of power that given to him as a priest to, to you know to baptize, to confect the Eucharist, mm-hmm. to you know uh, pray over the people and with and for the people, and then what goes on top of that is what we call a chasuble for priests, a mm-hmm. chasuble, or if for a deacon, we call it a dalmatic, d a l m a t i c. But then, so we got all that, and that's you can you can look all those up. Yeah, but the colors are what. This, this particular listener was like, what is the deal with, with the colors? Mm-hmm. You know, do I wake up in the morning and say, I think... I think it's today, a purple kind yeah, of day. I'm feeling a little melancholy. <clears throat> this whole month is just going to be I think I'm purple. just going to wear like a dark green, you know? <laughs> or my favorite one, I mentioned this on a show, this is probably like a year ago, but mm. there was a... Um, Pope Benedict was celebrating a mass, mm-hmm. and he gave a homily like about like our care of creation and the right. environment. And it happened to be during ordinary time, so he was wearing green. Anyway, mm-hmm. this this like religion reporter who doesn't know anything <laughs> basically was like, and, you know, Pope Benedict wearing green for you know for the environment. For the environment. <laughs> He's like, you come on, man. I guess in a roundabout way, that's kind of like, true, but but like not... read a yeah <laughs> read a book or yeah talk to talk to a Catholic <laughs> anywhere anyway. Mm-hmm. So so okay so Kyle uh, Kyle is in seminary which means he yes. knows things about oh. things is that what I've supposed to have been doing now this whole time? granted oh, okay. for the last year and a half he has been studying mostly philosophy right but Kyle also knows things about liturgical colors yeah 
Being uh, a convert, you kind of have to, you know, Google yes, catechize yourself. Yes, sometimes. you got to kind of wade your way through. Okay, so yeah. tell us about what are what are what what liturgical colors do we have, and what kind of mm-hmm. what do they? So the colors what do they mean the colors are kind of a, so like the Catholic Church, like her whole mass is um, built around like the human person, and like humans have senses. We have five of them, um, obviously. So like we do different things in the Mass to draw our attention through our senses to what's going on invisibly at the Mass, you know? So, like, the fact that Jesus is present is, like, we're, like, the Church is getting our attention to that with, like, incense, for example. That gets the attention of our noses with smell. Mm. Um, Ah, Sounds with, like, the choir, uh, with the bells and whatnot. Um, And then, like, visibly, obviously there's a lot going on visibly at the Mass, but the biggest way that the Church draws our attention to, like, the attitude that we should have and the the things that we should be, um, like, reverencing or just in awe of, you know, at Mass, like, wondering at, the biggest way that the Church gets our attention to that is through the colors. Um, So, like... Yeah. During, uh, well, we could just start with like Easter and Christmas. Obviously, the biggest. Those like, are the big ones. The biggest big feasts days. in seasons of the year. Um, and because of that, we choose or we wear the colors of like rejoicing and joy, um, which are like gold and white. So they're kind of yeah. interchangeable. Um, gold is kind of viewed as like a just a more special version of white as a liturgical you color. You don't see a lot of like straight up gold. What you see a lot of times is kind of white with, with gold. gold trim or something. Yeah, 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 as an accent. I don't know that I've ever. I, I think I've seen like, seen like maybe I mean, some like, like big gold. gold? Yeah, like not like real bi- gold, yeah. but like gold colored. Like at you know the Vatican or something, they'll wear like yeah. a straight up. You know, we definitely gold. don't have a gold gold. No, at the parish. Yeah, and I don't think Father Carey does either. Right. But the the I oh, so got white and gold. Yeah, so kind of like what we were talking about with the alb. You know the 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 base garment for a priest or a deacon at mass and for really any like you know any faithful catholic um symbolizes purity so like the color white is associated with the purity of heart and mind um Ooh. so right. it's like also because of that like purity equals rejoicing you know it's like this um this state of soul where um all that i have and all that i am is devoted to god so obviously like when so when we're wearing a chasuble, uh, when the priest is wearing the chasuble of like that's the color white for these different seasons, that's what he's putting on over himself is kind of this. Um, he's reminding himself of and reminding the faithful of the purity of soul that they're that we're all given in the resurrection of Christ and in the birth of Christ. Yes, and so I love that that like that that it's not so it's a re, it's certainly a reminder to the one wearing it. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, and I do this. I mean, as I'm getting ready for mass, you have to be attentive to okay, what what is today? What are we mm. doing? Is it Christmas or is it Good Friday? You know, is yeah. it is it is there a saint that we're celebrating today or or is it or or not? And then you know, so you look, kind of look that up. Mm-hmm. And I think most, especially as a priest, like you're very, I mean, I'm very aware of the liturgical calendar. Yeah. Um, so you know, kind of what you know, you always know what season it is. But so, but not just for the priest, but then for the for the people. Yeah. Um, so this happens a lot, where uh, like we'll be out in front, kind of greeting people as they come in for mass, and maybe wearing like red. Mm-hmm. And and very often people who maybe aren't as aren't as up on the liturgical calendar mm-hmm. as priests might be, they're like, "Ooh, what's like what's today? What's the day? Yeah. They're, you know, and is it what is it is Special it Pentecost? Occasion. Is it a martyr? Is it yeah? Okay, so that's white. So we got white so and gold. White, yeah. So what else were, do we got? What um, other choices? Well, the next color uh, I would think is uh, actually red. Actually, now that you're mentioning yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we typically wear red um, on feast days about like martyrs or pa- like the passion of Jesus. Ooh, so people who died, yeah, died people who for the died. Faith, yeah. um, and so Stanley Rother, yes. Blessed Stanley Rother, for example, um, and I mean, obviously, like the the symbolism there's kind of obvious of like blood, um, like this the person, blood of the martyrs, yeah, shed yeah. their blood. Ah, yeah, just like Jesus um, in his passion. So that's where that kind of comes from. But then also, um, kind of relatedly, red can symbolize in the liturgy like the passion of God for us, like His passionate love for us. Ooh. So that's why we also will wear red um, for. The masses, like masses associated with the Holy Spirit, which came at Pentecost as fire, it was, like appeared as fire. Yeah, over tongues the heads of, of the, fire. Yeah, heads of the apostles. So we'll we'll wear red for uh, yeah, mass of Pentecost, um, 
Masses where we celebrate the sacrament of confirmation, um, kind of by itself. Yes. Um, and then also just like any time a priest um, has the ability to just celebrate a mass of the Holy Spirit when there's you know no other feast days. Yeah, we call wear, it like a votive, votive mass of the yeah. Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we used to do that at, like at the, when I was at Bishop Kelly High School. We did that at the beginning of the school year. Mm, yeah, we would celebrate a mass of the Holy Spirit to kind of invite inviting the Holy Spirit into the school for for that year. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we got white. White and red. Red. What else? So the biggest chunk of the year um, is what we call ordinary time as a season, which sounds kind of boring, but it's actually oh, really ordinary. cool. Um, so that's the season that we wear green in predominantly. Um, so the priest will... Yeah, most of the year. Yeah, most, most of, the of the year we're wearing green. Yeah. On and so Sundays, it's, yeah. As, like, if you've been attending Mass for a while as a Catholic, you know, the color green can kind of be associated with, like, oh, there's nothing special going on. Yeah. Oh, it's just green. It's you just know? the Eucharist. Yeah. It's, it's just <laughs> Jesus coming <laughs> actually, to you in the flesh. Yeah. Um, kind of going back to what you're talking about, like, the you know, that one reporter with the whole environment thing. Yeah. Uh, um, like, the color green does kind of symbolize, like, life. You know, even in, like... Non-Catholic, yeah, yeah non-Catholic yeah. terms. It's like, it's about life, um, and that's what's going on during ordinary times. Like in in the ordinary parts of our life, that's where we grow the most. Actually, you know, in the ordinary parts of family life, um, just like ordinary moments of choosing love, um, learning lessons about life, like that all, like that's where most of our growth occurs as people. Uh, and I think the church wants to honor that by um, having liturgical ministers during this season wearing this color that symbolizes, yeah, the growth that's going on um, during this time. Yeah. And so it is, it, and, and I think in the the readings, like for ordinary time, the, the, the readings during ordinary time, mm-hmm. especially the gospel, are to kind of tell the story not of Jesus's, you know, birth, which is Christmas, mm-hmm. not his, not his final days, which is kind of Lent and Holy Week. Mm-hmm. But the his ministry, the, his, his ministry, yeah. yeah. So you're gonna during the Sundays of ordinary time, you're gonna hear about how Jesus taught and healed and called the disciples. Uh, so yeah, you're gonna kind of get yeah. that whole the other the the ordinary, if you will, mm-hmm. even though nothing that Jesus does. Is yeah, and I mean Jesus ordinary. even said while he was here, like I came that they might have life, and yes, have it abundantly. Yeah, um, and I was just thinking as well, like. Um, that's what heaven is going to be. It's just life overflowing onto us, yes. you know, which to like, I guess in a certain sense to us now, it like could be kind of boring because we're like, you know, we're not really used to heaven yet, uh, having just lived on earth. I think it's going to be overwhelmingly awesome. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it's going to take some getting used to, which is why like we have that season of ordinary times. Like, can we can we just get used to like being with Jesus? Yeah, if it were Easter the, all the time, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'd be like, oh, it'd be a lot. I mean, if, for a priest especially, you're like, man, there's so if much. If it's going Easter on. every day, yeah, yeah, wow. Okay, so we got so white, green. we got red, we got green, mm-hmm. and then violets or purple. Um, violet for, officially. Violet officially. Okay. Purple, that purple, in common you know. parlance. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love the purple. Yes. Um, that's kind of a royal color, but um, in like, in kind of a secular context. But in li- uh, the Catholic Church, purple usually means more like penance or conversion. It's like the yes. color of conversion. Yes. So we do that. We wear purple for uh, usually like a month or six weeks or like 40 days for Lent yep. um, before big feasts like Easter or Christmas. Um, and that's meant to symbolize like the time that we take to prepare ourselves um, spiritually and physically and whatnot for the coming of Jesus in some big way. So like Christmas mm. right now, well, I guess a few months ago, or not not a few months, yeah, ago, just a couple weeks, weeks ago, yeah, 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 a couple yeah. weeks ago, yeah, yeah. We're still in the we season. Were, yeah, we were in the season of Advent, which was like a preparation for Christmas. So we we imagined ourselves kind of like the Israelites waiting for the Messiah. Um, and then in a few weeks at Lent, we will be Coming doing up. the same thing, but Mid-February. waiting for uh, the resurrection of Jesus and like all of the good things that he did for us on the cross. Um, and so, yeah, the color purple is meant to like draw our minds to that. Yep. 
Yeah. So, so uh, there's usually, I mean, a big shift, like uh, it was sort of this year, it was kind of end of November. We, we come to the end of ordinary time. We have the sun, there's a Sunday called Christ the King, the solemnity of Christ the King of the universe. And then the next Sunday is like, you go from green to white to violet. Mm-hmm. Week, week, week. Like, yeah. wow. It, it's a big, that's a, that's a, there's a big, big change shift. there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then twice a year, we wear rose not vestments, pink. not rose. pink, rose. Um, so that's a whole, I mean, that's a whole mm-hmm. different That's kind of like a break thing. You know, that the church gives us in kind of the, you know, I mean, because the penance penitential get, seasons. Yeah, penance can get pretty heavy at a certain point. Uh, and so it gives us like a a break of like, Reminding us of the hope that we're break you know, the fast. Yeah, break the fast. Kind of yeah. have hope of the resurrection or of Christmas <coughs> coming up. Um, yeah, love it. So that's a little. I mean, that's a you know. Yeah, that's most liturgical of them. liturgical colors. Yeah, one hundred and one. Okay, mm-hmm. so I'm going to give you everyone a little. This will be like a little quiz. I'm just making this up as I go. So I'm going <laughs> to say a day, and mm-hmm. then you say what color is going to be worn on that day. Oh boy. Okay. Here we go. Uh, the Wednesday of the seventh week of ordinary time. Oh dang! You would wear. Oh wait, hold on. Let me let me go through the Rolodex in my brain. You um, got white, red, purple, green, pink. Mm, is it rose? Father say. O'Brien, is it by chance? Green. You're gonna wear green, right? Oh, it's the, it's the Wednesday yes. of the okay. seventh week of ordinary time. You're gonna wear green. Okay. The the feast of the martyrdom of John the Baptist. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Go, ooh, ooh. Kyle. I know, I know. I know. Kyle's I raising know. his hand. Oh, okay. I'm raising my hand, Father. Um is it r- r- no red. Red. Because red. Oh, it's sweet. the martyrdom of John the Baptist. Okay, now, how about the feast of the birth of John the Baptist? Bur- ooh. June twenty fourth, the, the nativity. Of John the of John the Baptist. So that's because... So you could say, well, John the Baptist was martyred. He was, but... So you might, you might we should wear red, but, but we're celebrating... His birth. His birth. Which is just kind of a, a general great thing as a saint. Yep. So would it, hmm, would it be like... Would it be white? So you wear white. Sweet. Yeah. Bingo. All right. Uh, the feast day, July 28th, the um, uh, the feast of uh, Blessed Stanley Rother, priest and martyr. Mm. Martyr. Blood. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Blood uh-huh. for Jesus. Red. 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 Sold. Sacrifice. How yes. about December 3rd, the feast of St. Francis Xavier? Francis Xavier. Oh, was he a... Was he a martyr? Not a martyr. Not a martyr. Oh. Died on a ship on his way to China. That's right. Um... I guess that would be white. So you'd wear white. Yeah, yeah, man. There we go. So anyway, th- you get you kind of get the you know the the different the days, theme. different colors, but each of them has a meaning. So when you walk into mass or you're watching mass on the live stream, whatever, um, you and you see, oh, the priest is wearing this color or this color. Yeah. There's a meaning behind it. It's not his mm-hmm. personal preference. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. not what he looks good in. What matches his eyes. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. The priest and the deacon are going to wear that. Now, that one color. sort of this is sort of little <coughs> inside uh, ch- inside church baseball. <laughs> you can always wear white. So hmm. sometimes, sometimes like like there'll be a ton of priests together. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, so for example, we did our priest retreat back in October, uh, and there were you know thirty of us, and we had mass together every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so the bishop. Who was who was at mass and he presided at mass every day. The bishop would have the liturgical color of the day, mm-hmm. and then the, all the other priests would have white. Right. So the bishop might be in green, mm-hmm. but the rest of us were in white because that's what you typically kind of have the most of. Yeah, you're not going to have thirty green, purple, yeah, vestments, just lying chasubles. You know, you're going to have really, you're going to have white. That's really cool, actually, because it, it kind of points to the fact that the default state of the Christian soul is rejoicing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, we're always, that's, like, because of the resurrection, because of what we are now, like, we're adopted sons and daughters yep. in Jesus, we are always rejoicing. You can always that. Yeah. yeah. How about a, uh, a wedding? Ooh. Oh, you would wear purple for that penance, right? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. Now, nice. That, would be, uh, that would be white. So weddings, you'd wear, the other priest yeah. would wear white. I'm pretty um, sure. How about uh, a baptism? Mm. That would be white as well. Also white. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. 
How about a funeral? Okay, this Ooh. is where it gets. This is where it can get a little a little controversial. So most of the accurate. time, most of the time when you go to a funeral, the priest and the deacon are going to wear white. But there's mm-hmm. also two other options. Yes. At a funeral, which are. Um, Kyle. So we, I think purple is one. You can wear you purple. Don't often right, see. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, and then black is the other one, which Ooh. is the color most, I mean, most people would associate that color with death, even like on a secular yeah. level, like yeah. outside the church. So the black, the black vestments are kind of making a little comeback. Yeah. So those of you who are older, older, uh, you, you would remember black vestments were, were, were pretty common. The, yeah, the standard. Uh, and so I think especially among, I think it's true, kind of among younger priests, maybe mm-hmm. more, and this I don't mean this in a good or bad way, but just sort of more traditional yeah. priests, the black vestment is making a comeback. Mm-hmm. I, It's not that I'm not a fan of it. I'm just not used to it. I mean, I've been to a lot of funerals. I've done a lot of funerals. And I've only worn black once and it was because mm. I was visiting a parish and the pastor requested mm-hmm. that I wear black oh, okay. because that's what they do. Oh, okay, and so I, gotcha. and, and I, and I honored that, you yeah. know, as being, as being a guest and, and he, they invited me to come celebrate this funeral. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was, it, 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 it was, I don't know. It was a little, it was a little uncomfortable. Yeah. It's definitely very different. It's very stark. I mean, when you yeah. walk out like in, in a, in a black vestment and it was a beautiful, beautiful vestment. Mm. But it like it gets people's attention. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking like it does does, does 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 like do the people get it? Like the symbolism behind of it, black, yeah. you know that that we're still mourning or that mm-hmm. we And I do. I think we jump. We did a show one time called like that. Basically, funerals are not Catholic funerals are not like celebrations of life. Yeah, we're we're there to pray for this person's mm-hmm. soul. You know. Yeah. Then we're not just canonizing them and immediately, you know, everybody just goes to heaven. Right. Um, and I think I think part of the the pushback of seeing like black vestments could be like um like I think when we associate the emotion of grief in our culture sometimes with despair. So we usually think of like those two things as occurring at the same like if I'm if I'm showing a lot of sadness, that means I don't have any hope. It's like the assumption. Ah, but we're so, yeah, so we're saying though that the two, you the can two grieve can co- yeah. with hope. I think that's St. Paul talks about, like, grieving, and, and like, not grieving like those that have no hope. That's right. Like, but as Christians, we we ah. still, like, you know, I mean, like, you think about, um, think about Jesus uh, when he visits Bethany after uh, uh, Lazarus dies. You know, he waits for Lazarus to die, and then he goes to Bethany, and he knows what's going to happen, right? Uh, he knows that he's going to raise this man from the dead because, you know, Jesus himself is the resurrection of the dead. But he still like he goes to the tomb and he weeps with the women yes. at the tomb that are weeping. Um, so I think that's what like the church is getting at with this color of black for funerals. Because like um, if you think about like somebody who's just died um, and the family of that person, um, a funeral usually happens like you know within a week, maybe two weeks sure. or so sure. of the person's death. Um, usually, like unless unless somebody is like exceptionally you know, emotionally stable, um, they're not going to go through, like, all of the stages of grief to get to, like, a joyful acceptance of death by that point. So, like, the funeral, like, funeral color of black helps that person, like, grieve openly in a way that is healthy for them, mm, like, in Kyle Dowd, I might be coming around. <laughs> all right, well, we're out of time. Uh, but that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Okay. So... Next time you see liturgical vestments and their colors, now you know mm-hmm. a little bit about why. And there's obviously more to it. You can kind of Google this and look it up, and mm-hmm. and there's there's more to it. But but keeping having that sort of liturgical mindset that every day is not the same. There are days that are sort of higher, like Easter and Christmas. Uh, there's days that are kind of lower, like the seventh, the Wednesday of the seventh week of ordinary time. Right? Mm-hmm. It's a big deal, but it's not as big a deal, of course, like as Easter or Good Friday right. or Christmas or you know all these kind of things. Anyway, mm-hmm. all right, we're out of here, Kyle. Well done. Thank Great you. Great to have you on Glad the to show. Be- two Glad weeks to be here. in a row. All right, a continued Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for your support and God your bless. prayers. God bless you.